Straight Red Car. Today, Brett and I are going to take on um, the games. Jamaica. The what? <laughs> I said Jamaica. Jamaica, yeah. Well, we had two games against Jamaica, of course. Okay. Yeah. Um, the first one, uh, I I put the blame of the loss totally on Jurgen Klinsmann, although, yeah, I, I don't think the players all played up to the best of their ability, and some were rusty. He didn't really played up to their benefit, their 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 top ability. Yeah, but you know what? When's the last time you saw any team really play an old school four three three? Yeah, I mean an old school four three three where literally Altidore, Dempsey, and Gomez in game one played mm -hmm. like forwards. They never really came back to help out on the wings. I mean Dempsey. They did check. They did check back a little bit to help out uh, the top half of the midfield, but still. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't didn't play like uh, our other four three threes, which play a lot more like a four five one. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what most teams do when it's time to play defense. Maybe the theory was by leaving Gomez and Dempsey and Altador slightly more forward, that once Beckerman, Jones, and Adu got possession, you know, they'd have three guys up top to get the ball to. Well, that never really materialized, and for that matter, Adu. Beckerman and Jones couldn't get their feet on the ball for most of the game because they were outnumbered in the midfield by five to three. And it was just so cluttered. It was a mess. I think you mentioned they just couldn't keep possession. They couldn't. And, you know, if, if I wasn't able to watch the game and I literally just saw the lineup, I would imagine, uh, despite the fact that it was listed as a 4-3-3, three, three, that it would have been played more of a 4-4-2 uh, four, four, with Dempsey playing as a uh, more of an attacking midfielder. Because it's not out of the ordinary that we're going to play uh, that Klinsman would play a uh, a defensive midfielder as a winger. Right. Uh, in this case, it would have been two. However, I did watch the game, and like you stated, it really was truly a four-three-three with our three strikers not coming back. And maybe maybe Klinsman felt that you know what, let's apply the pressure quickly. Let's uh, let's attack. Let's attack. Let's attack. Put Jamaica on their heels. Uh, the problem was is our player for the for the limited amount of the game that I was able to see. Um, we didn't pressure. We didn't attack. We yeah. didn't do anything. No. We, you know, we we gave them ten yards to play with the ball, and that played to their advantage. They were able to play it out wide and then play it into the box. And every time they got it out wide, I was cringing. I was like, "Oh my God, here comes another goal scoring opportunity." You know. Yeah. Well, despite the fact that they weren't able to score off of anything off the run of play, they always had to do off of set plays. Right. Uh, but you're asking yeah. you're asking Jones, for instance, to cover from the midfield all the way out into the wing area on midfield. Um, you know, Beckerman, Very defensive men. Yeah, yeah, and Beckerman's supposed to hold down the middle, and that's when Jones is playing on the right. He eventually moved to the left, of course. Uh, when Adu was on the left, they, he had to do the same thing. Um, and again, another, you know, more defensive-minded midfielder. And, you know, Dempsey played ahead of Adu. And this basically made sure that Johnson, Fabian Johnson and Parkhurst were no-shows for this game. Now, granted, they probably were playing conservative because they didn't want to get burned on the wings but it the way we played with the three on top and the three in the middle it, it narrowed us to the point mm -hmm. where it was yep. easy for jamaica to attack our wings and that's exactly what they did they used their speed well it was easy to attack the wings because there was no wings there right. you know right uh yeah we had absolutely no width now it's the biggest complaint from most of the soccer press out there especially it's like where was our width why don't we have width and I think we definitely saw an improvement upon that in the second match. Well, that's the thing. At least there was some improvement. My other problem with, with Jurgen Klinsmann in game one is where are the adjustments, man? We have just got our ass dominated by Jamaica, which is mostly made up of that it, players from, oh, that horrible league, the MLS. Boy, it must be a real horrible league. But anyhow, um, you know what? They possess the ball better. And Jurgen made no adjustments at all, except for later on taking out Beckerman and clap, clap, clap uh, there, Brett. We got our wish. Williams came in and played the first time in his actual real position. At, at this, you know, kind of a holding midfielder behind Jones and Adu. I don't know if he was listening or what. It took it took a lot of games to bit, continually bitch about that before we got our it's wish. A start, and yes, it... it kind of hinted at the fact that we're going to see more of this in the future uh, i well, hope like I, like I said earlier i wasn't able to watch the full match because i ended up having to go to a bar to watch a game because it was in bn sports oh yeah and BN uh, indianapolis sports. had 
a, uh, a massive, massive storm front come through and completely wiped out our signal. I literally had to go up to the bar and watch some of the game on some random guy's iPhone. Not his iPhone, but his Android. Yeah. His iPhone well, doesn't have quick, or it has quick time, but it doesn't have a uh, flash. So I can't watch it on my phone. Well, I tell so, you, yeah. It's a bit, of, a bit of a difference. I mean, it kept going in and out, in and out, and it was, it was a bit frustrating. I missed about a little over half the match. Yeah, that probably. sucks. And, you know, that really comes down to... Um, this whole being sports thing where they only are on direct and, and that sucks for a lot of people. Um, but then again, you know, not only what does that suck, what also sucked was their halftime reporting, their post game show. Tamara Lane needs a script. You can't just let her float around. I mean, she looked nervous. She didn't know what to say half the time. She flubbed up, but it's not all her fault. I mean, listen, that's why you have writers for shows. That's why you have people script out a show um, and script out some message. And if they're not going to do that, then Tamaris Lane is not going to be your gal to host that, you know, halftime show and that postgame show. I know mm -hmm. she's been on other soccer shows, but that's not really the role she played in those shows either. Um, you're mm -hmm. asking her to do something she's never really done before. Just a horrible production. The uh, uh, You're complaining that you're watching on the small screen, but I tell you what, even on a big screen, the, the angles were crappy, and that could be just, you know, the available right. angles at yeah. the stadium. But Exactly, yeah. But that most likely, and I want to see that's what it probably was. It was probably what was available in Jamaica. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's, it was what, it's their first, uh, first U.S. production as far as the U.S. Uh, national team is concerned. It will improve the amount of money that they're flooding into the U.S. market as far as taking control of certain aspects. You've got to imagine that the... The uh, production, as far as the halftime show, the whatever, uh, everything else is just going to improve. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's just it was an unfortunate turn of events. That, you know, I'm I'm glad that they went ahead and they they bought out the away rights for the U.S. games because I don't want another Guatemala issue where we have it on uh, pay per view. Yeah. Sort of crap, in my opinion. Yes. I'm glad somebody went out and bought it, and I I was more than happy to go out to a bar to watch the game. It just sucked that it happened to be during one of the larger storms that came through Indianapolis. Recently. Yeah, that was rough. You guys had it bad but up there. We we not so bad here. Just a few loud clatters. But you know, one last thing on game one. Um, you know, a lot of people were really hard on Willie Mammoth Head, um, <laughs> Kyle Beckerman. He had a horrible game, but let's face it again. That's a situation where Klinsman should know. He's playing one of the quicker teams, faster teams in CONCACAF. And Beckerman has, has always had uh, sh shoes full of lead. Always. I mean, he might as well be wearing um, bricks of gold on his shoes. Something you're carrying 10 pounds of hair on your head. And you've got all that hair on your head, which is definitely hurting your streamlining. Yeah. And, and, and so your chassis is all messed up to begin with, right? And so, yeah, I mean, you've got that all that hair, and then you've got bricks tied to your shoes the guy's slow he's always been slow so you can't start Beckerman in a situation where he's he's playing with only two other midfielders legitimate midfielders um, he needs to have somebody playing in front of him and uh, I don't know it, it and, and you can't he how many times did he stick out his leg at the last second and he Ugh. was still three seconds behind you know it was horrible scared me with some of the tackles he had and you know he got caught well, at least one of the time Right, and well, one of them led to, of course, one of the free, free yeah. and, uh So then we got to game two, and, you know, on our little friend group, of course, we have this little collection of friends, and, you know, I posted up what I think would be a better lineup and a better setup, and I didn't get it exactly right, but I was close. Zussi played well. Um, the lineup made m much more sense. He had Gomez up top with Dempsey floating underneath behind him. And it was more like a 4-4-1-1, four, four, one, one, although I'm sure we called it something else, which is fine. I'm, I'm, I'm getting over this formation actual naming thing because sometimes, you know, whatever we call it, it really isn't that. Um, but you had Williams playing behind Jones in, in centrally. You had Torres on the left, Zussi on the right. And then, of course, we, we brought Boca back, which, you know, it's not like, um, it's not like Goodson played horrible in game one. But we needed Boca's leadership, and I thought there you go. That's the big yeah. thing right there. It went, the way he uh, he called over to Cameron and told him to calm down immediately yeah. after we scored, where he was just lumping the ball forward. Yeah, uh, that's exactly what we needed. 
uh, unfortunately, it just didn't pan out in the end. Yeah. Well, speaking of leadership, also Torondolo coming back. Oh, yeah. Um, you know what? He played really well. He played like we expect Torondolo to play. He wasn't. Uh, the speed wasn't too much for him because, you know, he's got the the soccer IQ. And he knows where to place himself. Um well, the speed wasn't an issue for three uh, for two thirds of the game because uh, Jamaica sat back and didn't play. They played a nine zero and one lineup. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was very, very <laughs> defensive minded. And then once they had to kick it in for a short spurt, there they did actually they did. kick it. Oh in. yeah, they pressured. Which which brings a question to my mind: Why didn't Jamaica come out and play aggressively? Mm-hmm. I understand the idea of going on the road and getting a point uh, is ideal, but you know. The U.S. didn't really per- show anything worthwhile on an attack-minded uh, formation in Jamaica. I mean, I would if I was Jamaica, I would have come out strong and just applied the pressure, which they ended up doing at the last third of the match and uh, yeah. really made it a nail-biter. I thought maybe, you know, after the first half when everything went off the post and it didn't it looked like one of those nights for the U.S., I think maybe Jamaica thought, well, this is working. You know, it's going to be one of those nights for the United States. They're not going to be able to squeeze one in, try as they may. And let's, I, yeah, yeah, and, and three, and, three posts, three posts. I would have thought, well, we got to do something different because eventually one of those post balls are going to go in. And then, of course, it, that's not what happened at all. It was a really decent shot by Gomez. By no means the best rocket, most rocketing shot I've ever seen, but it went in. That's all that counts. And it was a, you know, a mistake by the goalie. He had it. All he needed to do was punch it or shove it to the side, and it went off his hands right into the goal, thankfully for us. But, you know, I think a lot of people, even um, Tight Shirt Twelman said, you know, he expected Altidore to start that game. But I don't understand why you would expect that. Um, I think Gomez has earned his spot on this this club. Oh, yeah. No, no, I completely agree with you. Gomez has definitely earned his spot right now, and Josie's going to have to re-earn it back or – uh, Klinsman's going to have to find a formation where you could possibly play Gomez and Josie together. Um, I think I think uh, the uh, the amount of t- playing time that Josie has gotten under Klinsman these past handful of games has really played against him because at that point in the match, uh, I mean, the U.S. team is sitting back and not really applying the pressure. I mean, Gomez looked amazing against Jamaica in this, this second match. However, I think the entire team looked amazing up until Gomez's goal. Right. Um, once we got that goal, you know, it looked to me like uh, Jones ended up pushing back and sitting back. And even even Tightshirt made a comment saying that Jones is sitting as far back as uh, Williams is. Yeah. And we were no longer applying that high line pressure. We were no longer pressuring them, uh, forcing the turnover, which allowed us to keep that eighty per- that roughly eighty percent possession time in the first half. Do you think? And, do you think Jones made that decision by himself though? No, that's that's the big question. I mean, is that the was that the was that the plan? Once we got a, a lead, that Jones is going to sit back and we we're going to play very defensive, or was that just uh, decided upon Jones? Jones just like, oh, you know what, we got the goal. I'm going to sit back and we're going to hold this lead off. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a must win. Uh, it makes you wonder if Klinsman said, hey, once we get the lead, we're going to stop being as aggressive. We're going to hold this lead and we're going to win the match. Mm-hmm. Um, and it almost came back and bit us in the butt. I'm not saying that it was Klinsman's decision or if it was Jones. I have no idea. It was not in the locker room. Yeah. Well, when, my, my whole point about this was that when Josie came in, we really didn't have much of an offensive mind to attack. I mean, we ended up getting some opportunities toward the end, but that's not to say that Josie's opportunities that he had were quality by any means. His first touch on a couple of plays were just dreadful, and he has to sharpen that up if he's going to make an impression again. Before he gets back in the lineup right a little too fancy at times and other times yeah. you know get a little greedy man take a shot okay. had a shot didn't take it pass it over nothing happened or came of it i did like the fact that with this lineup at least it freed up our wings it also freed up johnson down the left mm-hmm. uh freed up Torunolo to move down the right this is the lineup this is the formation i want to see us play in the future Please, no more old school four three three. Not even the Dutch play four three three like that anymore. No one does. Not even it, Barcelona. Not Spain. Nobody plays a four three three like we did in the first game. And there's a reason why. It's easy to counter. It's easy to outnumber the the opponent when you actually literally have three guys playing forward who don't come back that much and help them. In.